Hello and welcome to my latest video on secrets to EPQ success. Today we're going to be thinking about how you can attain the A star grade in AQA's 2020 specification for EPQ. It's likely that one of the reasons why you potentially consider looking at an EPQ as a qualification that you'd like to complete is because you're wanting to get a really good grade that you could use to help you stand out on your UCAS application or potentially you wanted to gain those extra UCAS points because when you complete an EPQ to A star standard, you do get 28 UCAS points, which is the equivalent of half of an A level at A star standard. In AQA's 2020 specification, they do give an overview of what an A-star project actually looks like. And if you haven't checked that out, I would recommend taking a look at that overview. What I'm going to do in today's video is I've picked out some of the key phrases and key sentences from the A-star grade descriptor in AQA specification. And look at what you need to do to make sure that you get that A-star grade that you really, really want. The first thing that you need to do if you're going to get an A-star in the EPQ is you need to identify your project topic area, you then need to create an effective design for your EPQ product and create a really thorough plan. You're going to get a significant amount of marks in the record initial ideas for this particular uh, element of the A-star grade descriptor. What you will need to do in your record of initial ideas in your production log is you will need to clarify to AQA and to your supervisor how you're going to create your project. You will need to create a really extensive plan, maybe using strategies like creating deadlines, maybe creating a weekly schedule for all of your tasks, using things like an urgent and important matrix, mind mapping, research skills. All of these things are going to help to prove that you have a really good plan in place to make your EPQ a success. The other thing which you need to do is pick a really appropriate format for your EPQ product. If you're writing a report and maybe your uh, report is science-based, you might want to think about actually designing your written report like a scientific report with evidence and data within. If you're doing a sociology or a humanities-based um, written report, you may pursue an essay-type report. And you will need to justify why you've selected the specific type of report if you're going to get an A-star. If you're doing an artifact, you should convey to AQA why you think your chosen type of artifact is the best way for you to address the needs of your audience. Those students with the most effective planning are the ones who demonstrate planning skills throughout. One of the common mistakes is students overload the early stages of the production log with lots of planning material and lots of planning evidence. In reality, there will always be planning evident throughout the whole EPQ process. And what you need to do is to communicate to AQA how you're planning to complete the very next stage all the way through that project process. The second thing which AQA say an A-star student needs to be able to demonstrate is high levels of organisation and the ability to work independently. What we have to remember with the EPQ is that you can't be spoon-fed your EPQ process. You can't be spoon-fed your topic area. It's up to you to go away and do all the research. It's up to you to take parts of the talk content sessions and embrace those skills into your planning and into your EPQ process. What you will need to do is show the ability to make your own decisions. This is going to get you lots of what we call AO3 marks. And that shows that you have the ability to develop and realise your project from an initial concept and initial plan into that final product, which you'll be able to show off and talk about for years to come. To demonstrate really high levels of organisation, you might want to consider things like setting regular deadlines, creating things like Gantt charts, being on time for your talk content sessions and your supervisor review meetings. In addition, it's really important you provide as much evidence as possible in that production log about everything you did in your EPQ process. One of the biggest frustrations for me when standardising and marking EPQs is I look at a project and the student has created a fantastic final essay, but they have not provided enough evidence of how they've created that essay or that written report. It's so important that you visualise to your AQA moderator and to your supervisor all of those steps that you're taking. You must have been highly organised if you submit a 5,000 word written report which is well referenced. So show us, tell us exactly what you've done to make your report a success or of course your artefact a success. The third thing which AQA say an A-star student must do is use a wide range of resources critically and analyse data effectively. If you're just using the BBC website uh, as your main referencing tool, that's not going to be effective. That's not going to get you to level three. Those students who are able to use the widest range of resources, maybe scientific journals, maybe videos, maybe uh, articles from the web, maybe books, maybe journals, those students are the ones who are going to have much better quality research and are then going to have much better quality data to analyse in their written report. 
It's also really important that you consider the limitations of any resources that you use. If you do use websites, what are the issues with that website that you um, use? Are there any strengths to that website? Is there a reason why you actually want to include specific reference to that website? Is it internationally acclaimed? Is it written by a world leader, uh, a world res renowned researcher in that particular field? Tell us why you're using that resource. Likewise, if you find resources that have differing opinions uh, or maybe differing narratives on a particular topic area, tell us about it. Tell us about how that could invalidate some of your other resources or why you might need to do further research to clarify any material you found so far. The reason why the University of Cambridge, the University of Oxford, really love the EPQ process is because it promotes deeper reading. And that's highlighted here by this requirement of AQA in their A-star grade descriptor. It says that students should understand links between sources and fully explore the complexities of a topic area. So rather than just doing a general gloss over of many, many different areas, what you need to do in your written report is read deeper rather than read more widely. So what you need to do is actually go into the complexities of that topic area, look at any ambiguities, look at maybe some really difficult terminology, learn what that terminology means, do deeper reading to really improve your understanding of the topic area. And if it gets a little bit hard, don't just abandon it, actually demonstrate to AQA you have the willingness and the problem solving skills to actually overcome any barriers in understanding and actually show AQA you're willing to do lots more research to improve your understanding. And as a result, the final quality of your project product will improve. One of the easiest ways to gain AO3 marks, develop and realise marks, is to actually show that you have the ability to identify and overcome problems. What some students try and do is basically gloss over or paper over any cracks and don't admit to any weaknesses. Actually, the EPQ process is all about making mistakes and then learning from them or finding strategies to help you overcome those problems that you're encountering. And actually by being able to show those independent decision making skills and overcome barriers and address problems, you're going to gain a really significant amount of marks. So don't be afraid to front up your weaknesses, front up the limitations of your project and then tell AQA what you're going to do to actually improve your project product and the process. Your EPQ supervisor and centre coordinator will need to give AQA an overview of the content of your taught content sessions. So give uh, AQA an overview of all of the skills that you should have gained by attending those 30 hours of taught content sessions. Those taught content sessions aren't just for fun. They are to equip you with some of the really significant skills required to master an EPQ and get the best possible grade. It's really important that in your production log, you show evidence of understanding the benefit of embracing those skills which are being presented to you in the taught content session. If you just gloss over the taught content sessions and pretend they didn't happen and just pursue your own strategies all the time, that's probably not going to make for the most effective EPQ. So what you need to do is demonstrate your taught content uh, session skills that you've acquired in your production log somewhere or in your presentation to make sure you do gain marks for those high level skills which AQA expect you to have achieved. One way to gain AO4 marks, review marks, is to actually reflect on how those skills might also be useful in future study or in employment. Another skill that an A star candidate will demonstrate is the ability to draw conclusions. One of the really frustrating parts about marking EPQs sometimes, especially written reports, is that when you get to the end of the written report, Students present a conclusion just simply as a summary. There's lots of repetition and lots of description of all of the previous analysis and written prose within the main body of their text. In your conclusion, you need to come to a final judgment. And that is a skill which AQA are looking for and will give a significant number of marks for. So make sure that you do come to a conclusion. Maybe outline any further research that needs to be done in this topic area to validate your findings. And if you do that, you're definitely going to be in those higher grade boundaries. If you do just summarise information in your conclusion, then you're not going to be able to get those, those high level marks and you're probably not going to demonstrate that you're an A-star candidate. A-star students should be able to clearly present their project outcomes. Now this could be in the form of your uh, written report, obviously being to a good standard. If you're doing an artefact, your artefact should be of a really high quality and it should be demonstrated in the best possible way. And you should be able to justify why you picked that particular format of artefact for your project. In addition, you must be able to communicate your project outcomes to a non-specialist audience in your presentation. So when you're performing to a non-specialist audience, you really need to take the, the level of academia down to a basic common denominator so everybody can follow along. Your report or your artifact can be designed for a specialist audience, but those students who get the A-star grades are those who are able to communicate their project findings to expert level 
readers of their report or expert level audience for their artifact, but also able to simplify the topic area and their project outcomes to that non-specialist audience. You can also gain marks for presenting your project outcomes by writing an abstract. If you don't have capacity in your word count to include the abstract in your written report, one top tip is to include it in your summary and reflection stage of the EPQ production log. The penultimate point in the A-style grade descriptor is about providing excellent supporting evidence. Like I said earlier in this video, sometimes I see really well written reports, but students just really don't understand how to provide evidence to demonstrate the process. The process of completing that report must have happened, there must have been planning, there must have been attendance at talk content sessions, there must have been checks for plagiarism, there must have been drafting, but we're not seeing evidence of it. It's really important that everybody understands the importance of the production log. If you just put bullet points in your production log or treat it as a brief description or brief overview of what you've done, you're not going to gain those marks. It's really important we get as much detail as possible. In addition, it's really beneficial for your supervisor or for the external moderator if you can include any supporting evidence within the production log. So maybe include your presentation slides in presentation record part A rather than simply stapling them to the back. If you've made cue cards for your presentation, likewise, include those in presentation record part A. If you've done mind maps or Gantt charts, maybe you want to include those in your planning review or maybe in your mid-project review rather than, again, simply stapling them to the back. Try and make sure your production log is fully loaded with all the evidence of how you made each independent decision to realise the final outcome of your extended project. The extended project is considered as a super curricular activity and universities really value it because students are able to show deep understanding. And what we mean here by deep understanding is not only that deep understanding of your project area, you should be an expert, you should be able to respond to questions on the spot at the end of your presentation, but also show a deep understanding of the process and of the skills that you've gained. So in that final summary and reflection stage of your production log, you should be able to evaluate your own learning outcomes. So you should be able to assess what you've done well and what you could do to improve if you were to retake this qualification in the future or do similar project work, maybe at undergraduate level. Like I said, if you haven't checked out the full uh, overview of what AQA are looking for for an A-star student, I would fully recommend looking out for that document within the EPQ specification. I'll include a link to the specification below so that you can scroll through and have a look at the A-star grade descriptor. There is also a grade descriptor for a grade C candidate and for a grade E candidate. What I would like to remind you is that the mark scheme for AQA's EPQ is within the specification. It's a public document. Now, when you complete an exam, you don't have access to the mark scheme. When you're completing a class test or homework, your teachers probably say, don't look at the mark scheme. There's no value in that. But actually, with the EPQ, one final tip, one final thing I would recommend is that you should look at the mark scheme. You should be aware of all the assessment criteria. You should be aware of all the skills that AQA expect you to demonstrate and exactly how they expect you to demonstrate it. So have a look at that mark scheme within the specification and think about whether you're achieving that high level in each of the assessment criteria or maybe you need to do some extra work to push yourself from the mid or lower bracket up into that top level and secure that A star grade. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to like the video if you have enjoyed it, but I'd also be really, really grateful if you commented with feedback on how your EPQ is going. Let me know whether you're aiming for that A-star grade and what you're doing to try and get to that grade descriptor. In addition, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any further videos about how to complete the production log or how to embrace talk content skills for the extended project. Have a great day, guys, and good luck with your EPQ.